Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. Today we're coming to you from Malta, and we're so honored and excited to have the CEO and the founder of Soulcare, Mr. Pradeep Goel. Thank you so much for being here. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it. Sure. You have said during an interview, the healthcare sector is rapidly heading to digitalization. Could you tell us a little bit how do you see this coming along as someone being in healthcare for more than 30 years? Well, first, thank you for that question. It's a really fundamental trend. Healthcare has been largely static for the last 30 years. The innovation we see is mostly around biosciences. So we all know new drugs are making health better in terms of care. But in terms of how health is managed, in terms of benefits, in terms of payments, in terms of access, we have gotten things backwards, things have gotten worse. So there are fewer choices from our patient perspective, there are more restrictions, there are more uh, uh, third parties who have to approve your healthcare decisions. So the interaction between doctor and patient has gotten worse, not better. Not because they don't want it to be better, but because we have lots of regulation and rules that drive that interaction. So in a very simple nutshell, what COVID did is COVID said, wait, this doesn't work. The, the healthcare model of where by our match by a third party it doesn't work. We need more open access. So we have digitization happening in healthcare as a simple fact that people need better care. Right. And we cannot deliver better care to them unless we change underlying administrative systems. So if you look at the five or six fundamentals of healthcare, who has records, medical records, who controls and owns them, that problem is a big problem now because all the records are stored with institutions, not with the patient. So the patient has no visibility into their medical records. So that's one problem. Who determines how much the doctor gets paid is another big problem. Uh, so right now, an insurance company like the where I used to work, or government agencies set the rate. So as a result, the physicians can deliver healthcare, but they don't know how much they're going to get paid. So that's creating a real uh, issue, and it has been an issue for the last 20, 30 years now. Then the third question is, how do I choose my doctor? What's the transparency around cost? So these are fundamental issues that's making healthcare very difficult worldwide, but they're solvable. And again, going back to COVID, COVID showed that people can access healthcare remotely, they need to access healthcare yes. remotely. We showed that doctors can actually attend to patients remotely. And we also saw that payments need to be digital. You cannot, if you cannot go see the doctor, you cannot pay the doctor in person. So you're going to have to do digital payments. So these trend lines have all come together. Uh, and the other trend lines are that people are getting older. Yeah. The world population is getting older. Yeah. So there is more need for chronic care, for continuous care. Uh, young and healthy think of a doctor visit as I go. And I get treatment and I get well. But when you get older, you don't just go once, you go again and again and again because you have diabetes or hypertension. So it's continuous care. So, and continuous care we know doesn't work as well as it should because there is no continuity of records or payments. So, all these factors bring us to today where almost universally, the worldwide governments, Patients, doctors can agree that we can do a better job of delivering healthcare if we had electronic medical records that were shareable, if we had digital payments that were instantaneous, if there was more transparency in cost of the doctor before you went to see them, if there was more choice in where you get your MRI done instead of just being going to one lab, which may cost you three times as much as a lab 300 meters away. Yes. All these issues are driving digitization. But the fundamental reason why digitization in healthcare is eminent and is happening now is because patients are demanding more care and better care right. and doctors are struggling to deliver it so there's yes. a finite supply and infinite demand right. so that's those are all the big trends now i've seen these trends build up over the last 30 years right. but now you reach a tipping point yeah it's almost like uh, the singularity point which is after the risk of point of no return that now people urgently need a solution yes right i think this is a perfect moment for us to what is self-care and who you are building it for. Yeah. So, in a simple sentence, we're building solve care for our children. Right. My vision for solve care is that my kids and your kids and their kids will have a better access to healthcare. Right. So in a very simple statement, our mission is to improve access to healthcare and improve transparency of healthcare for the patient. Now, to achieve that, we have to solve a whole host of problems, be it administrative issues around who approves healthcare access, <coughs> be it digital payment issue, be it a uh, care, care quality problem. Right. And so how do I know that my doctor is delivering, giving me the best possible care for my situation? 
Uh, healthcare is also very regional and politicized, right? Because it's regional. Yeah. Every healthcare jurisdiction, be it US or UK or Australia or India, so different. are different. But all of them have the common theme. as exists today can begin to provide a different infrastructure for healthcare. And if we change the infrastructure, then we're going to change healthcare from the bottom up. Uh, my background in healthcare is IT. I've built many healthcare systems. And what I see about all the systems I've built so far, before and after, in the last 25, 30 years, the systems that I've designed or been part of, they're all based on one entity controlling everybody's information. Absolutely. And that entity, therefore, is always in charge. Be the insurance company, be the hospital, be the government agency, yeah. be the public health administrator. Right. Whoever controls the data controls healthcare. Absolutely. Now, the the after statement says the patient should control the data, so the yeah. patient can control the healthcare. Yeah. So in that regard, SolveCare's mission is to empower the patient with information, access, payment capability, transparency, and rights. That's what we are trying to do. And we use uh, distributed ledger technology, also known as blockchain, to enforce those patient rights. That's what we do. Absolutely. And you know we're in the crypto conference, we must have to follow up with this question. I do acknowledge that soft token is a utility token. Could you tell us, the audience out there in the world, something about your token? So the purpose of soft token is multifold. But from a patient perspective, if you have soft token, you can access physicians that uh, accept that token. You can make an immediate when you make an appointment, you're guaranteed that you'll be given the service that you signed up with, that you need, and if you don't get a service, uh, proper service or timely service, you'll get your token back. The doctor has the ability to accept that token and be sure that they're going to get payment in real time. Uh, one of the big problems that from a doctor perspective that exists is that I can go see you, you're my physician, uh, and when I leave, 30, 60, 90 days later, somebody might pay you something. So that somebody might be an insurance company or a government agency that says, you know what, I'll give you this money no matter what you actually charge. So in healthcare, there's a problem of third party payments. Yeah. We're trying to eliminate that by saying patient pays a doctor a token. Yeah. The token can be redeemed by the physician. The token can be issued by a third party, but the patient hands the token to the doctor at the point of care. So we are trying to simplify this entire mess of um, who pays whom, when, and how much. We have built a pro token that can be programmed. So depending on the type of care you give me, the token can change value. Right. If I just go to see you to get a prescription filled, that's one thing. If I go to see you and you prescribe to me seven different tests, right. that's the value of my token can change. Right. So the idea of the token uh, and the purpose of Salt Token is to first give you access to a vast array of doctors right. who accept the token, and second is for that token to serve as immediate payment, and third is a guarantee that that token that you gave guarantees that you will get the service that you so that sounded like in order for the solve token to be as useful to serve all the party as you just mentioned, does it have to be for the solve token the price it needs to be somewhat stable? So it is stable inside the transaction. Right. So when a transaction happens in a patient and a doctor, like an appointment right. is requested, right. an appointment is given, yeah. at that moment in time, the, the price of the SOFT token gets fixed to that transaction. Right. But before and after the token price is normal, it's variable in the market. Right. So when I make a payment to you, and you are my doctor, and you accept that token from me, yes. and that token is worth whatever you service you gave me, right. that price gets fixed at that moment in time because it's inside the transaction. Right. But once you redeem that token, the token goes back in the market as variable. Okay. So token is variable before transaction begins and after the transaction ends. But for the lifespan of a transaction between a doctor and a patient, it gets fixed to the value of that transaction. Perfect. So it shifts both ways. Absolutely. The reason I ask that because I think about in the perspective of my uncle or aunt, let's say they are like 50 something or 60 something years old, a this concept needs to be able to as easy as possible for them to understand Absolutely. as well, right? So the way we do that, just to answer that question, yes. is that the, that the patient uses the care wallet. Yeah. Now the care wallet handles the token for yeah. you. So you don't need to really learn blockchain or tokenomics or token variation. All the patient knows is I have a wallet, I find GRZ as my doctor, I make an appointment and I pay you. Yeah. And when I pay you from my wallet balance, it takes enough from my wallet balance to pay whatever your appointment cost is. At that point in time, I'm done. Now, how that happens behind the scenes, how we move the token from the wallet to the patient, to the wallet to the doctor, how do we manage this value chain, that's all happening on our chain. 
So end of the day, the patient really is a grandmother. Yeah. So our avatar is that care wallet has to be grandmother friendly. Absolutely. And we basically hide all the rest of the complexity from the patient. So it's about the digital adoption. If you look at a Coinbase and why they became a popular exchange, they simplified yes. the buying, selling, owning crypto, right? Absolutely. So we are doing the same thing for healthcare using Care Wallet. Okay. Well, question with your project. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the research, I saw that um, you all have this partnership going on with Cardia app. Yes. Uh -huh. Would you mind to share with us about the update? So as I mentioned, some of the fundamental issues of healthcare are patient data, that the doctor can rely upon and the doctor can use as a clinically um, valid uh, information. So the, we are partnering with a variety of device companies who deliver, who have devices that patients can buy and use at home. And our job in that sense is to ensure that the device to doctor custody of data is clearly defined. Yes. The, con the data is properly contextualized to a disease or to a data prescription. If you think of data as a prescription, same way as you, the doctor gives you a prescription for medicine, uh, they can also give you a prescription for data. In our system, a doctor can say, I want you to collect the following pieces of information about your health over the course of 30 days, and then come back to me. Uh, I want you to take blood glucose test in the morning before you eat, and then one before you go to bed. I want you to do it for 30 days. I want you to measure your heart rate, or your. Uh, I want you to take an EKG every three days. So the doctor can prescribe a data prescription. Our care wallet will then enforce that prescription automatically. So these devices, be it Cardio Mobile and many other devices that we are working with, they then automatically enforce that prescription. So the patient doesn't need to worry about it. Right. So the, my grandmother will get a message in her wallet saying it's time for you to take your EKG, plug in your Cardio Mobile device, take your EKG, you're done. Then we'll take that data, we'll link it to the identity of the grandmother, we'll link it to the right doctor who has requested the data, we'll properly chronologically organize it, we'll put it inside the context of the prescription, and that data now the doctor can actually use. Yeah. So we are essentially creating a framework for doctor to collect patient data in the context of a disease, okay. or in the context of a treatment plan, right. instead of randomly collecting data and randomly yeah. sending it yeah. here and there. Absolutely. And the patient can link and can be assured, the doctor can be assured that the patient collected the data according to instructions, right? The frequency, before and after meals, before yeah. going to bed, the duration of the task, all those things. So to enable this at-home data collection for patients, which we think is gonna be very important, because as more and more people move towards telehealth and telemedicine, this remote data collection is going to be critical. Right. So we have partner, we partner with AliveCore, which is a company that makes home EKG devices. Very innovative device. You can buy it or order it from Amazon, and you can do a home EKG. Right. So EKGs cost a lot of time and money to go to a lab. Now you can do it at home. And we have linked that device to a care wallet. So as a result, when you do an EKG, the data gets collected in your care ledger, and the care ledger is shared with the doctor, and the doctor can see it, yeah. and the care ledger also knows how to link the data back to a prescription. Yeah. So all that linkage is called the closed loop problem in healthcare right. that we solved. And we are looking at many other devices, you know, glucose monitor, we're looking at oximeter, we're looking at uh, um, the standard blood pressure monitors. So all those devices, the idea is to give the patient a choice of collecting whatever data the physician needs Absolutely. and to do so in a very organized way. Yeah. Because random data, uh, the, the, the real issue here is that you can buy devices and you can collect all this data. Even your Apple Health app has so much information about you. Yeah. But because it is without context, it's meaningless clinically. Absolutely. Because you don't know whether the data was collected when the patient was sleepy or hungry or tired Absolutely. or stressed. Absolutely. So what's the point of this data? Because it has no clinical value. So our job at SolveCare is to collect data inside a clinical journey. Yes. And that's where all these devices are coming into play. So we are we are working with a whole host of some very big names that you would immediately recognize and some more specialized uh, device companies like AliveCore to build a very complete data collection ecosystem. Absolutely, that's fantastic. And it's so important that, and I believe more and more people in the world are realizing that the doctors or the institutions who have access to certain kind of data within the context is Correct. so important. What are something that I feel comfortable sharing? What are something that I don't feel comfortable sharing? Yes. And launching and your company is really playing a big part of solving that issue and providing value for the people you need. Yep. So, so in a very nutshell, your data is in the care wallet, all the data yeah. that you have collected through devices, through tests, through labs, through your personal data entry but then you share the part of it, and all the data gets chronologically put inside the care ledger, which is yours. Yeah. It's encrypted and only stored in your, with your key. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you want to share some part of this ledger with yeah. a doctor, you can do that, and that's all you share with them. Yeah. If they need more from you, they can request it very easily by sending you a data card, yeah. and you can approve the data card to go back with data filled from your ledger. Yeah. So in effect, you have absolute control over who sees how much. More importantly, you can take the data away at some point. You can yeah. say, you know what, you're no longer my doc. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna uh, remove access to my ledger. And in which case, all future entries of the ledger will not be visible to the doc. Amazing. So you can have continuous scare, yes. but as long as you want continuity, and then you can stop and say no more. And it's in this case, it's what you're already saying, the blockchain, the power in the hands of the people, right? Yes. And power in the hands of the patient. Yep. Absolutely. They can decide and they can, like I mentioned, they can decide. So with us, would you mind share with us the, roughly the six month or 12 months or so, the roadmap, what you got going on, what you have plans, so our vision boils down to sort of three tracks. One is we want to enable the doctors to create their own care journeys. So in our system, you can create a very intelligent clinical journey. You can define it very quickly. And that journey you can have with your patient. So the idea of the platform is that physicians can create their own care journeys by, without learning blockchain. But all those care journeys get written to the blockchain automatically, into the ledger automatically. So they let the doctor decide uh, as a cardiologist what kind of information they want and what kind of care routine they want the patient to follow. Let the ophthalmologist decide the same and let the endocrinologist decide the same because every patient-doctor interaction is unique to a situation. So our goal here is to allow a physician-dictated journey to be authored by simply doctor defining the journey. And that journey automatically works in both the patient wallet and the doctor wallet. So without writing code. So in that model, we are creating a fact application protocol on blockchain where clinical people who are not programmers, who are not blockchain experts, who are not crypto experts, can take advantage of the blockchain and crypto payments, but do so at a very clinical level. Now, that's goal one. So that's the, uh, the upcoming release of the platform, uh, what we call the Andromeda release. And we have hundreds of doctors around the world who are looking at the platform and the journey capability saying, oh, I could use this in my practice. I could use this in my hospital, I could use this in my clinic. So that's the goal one. Yeah. Goal number two is to support as many, uh, so we are somewhat above the blockchain level, right? So we are everything to do with application, consent, identity, transaction, and yes. payments, yes. and blockchain powers us. Yes. So we are looking to support multiple blockchains. We are currently on the Ethereum enterprise. Yes. Okay. So we are looking to work with a variety of chains so we can support a larger ecosystem of blockchains. So that's goal number two. And goal number three is to make Salt Token a more easily accessible, more useful currency for healthcare. So our vision is that Salt should improve access to care for patient, should deliver accurate and timely payment to the doctor with rights of both sides enforced by the token itself. So in other words, if I make a payment to you uh, for an appointment and then you somehow cannot come to that appointment because you got stuck in traffic, I shouldn't have to pursue refund. The token will refund because it, it is linked to, the redemption is linked to an appointment completion. If that event didn't happen, the token should revert back to my wallet. Nobody should do any yeah. work. Yes, automatically. Fairness, yeah. right? So those kind of yeah, programmable capability of token is what yeah. we are increasingly adding. So a more just healthcare token, a more just healthcare platform in which care can be delivered better yes. and access to everyone, regardless of which crypto world they are in or which blockchain they belong to. That so that's what we're trying to do. Amazing. So as I said, do you have any call to action for audience out there listening or watching? Follow your um, YouTube, social media, and besides that, do you have any specific call to action in mind? So there are many. So first is if you are a clinician, if you are delivering healthcare, whether you're a therapeutic uh, you know, provider, whether you're a clinical provider, whether you're a nurse, nurse or a nursing assistant, if you're dealing with patients, if you're dealing with chronic care, if you're dealing with emergency care, then you should come talk to us about how we can help you deliver better care. How can we can empower you to build a care journey that you might be able to serve all the pregnant women in your portfolio of patients better, or all the cancer-stricken children, whatever the, uh, whoever you serve, you know, we can give you tools to do a better job. Uh, and it is, it really doesn't cost a whole lot of time to build a very patient-specific journey. The second is if you're a developer, then come to us because we'll show you how to build very powerful digital health solutions. Healthcare is going through massive transformation post-COVID. We all agree that, right? The world will remember healthcare before COVID and after COVID. And if you're part of the future of healthcare, you have an idea on how you can make healthcare work better in your neck of the world, in your slice of the world, then there's probably something we can do together. We can enable you.
Um, and we have a lot of programs for people who are trying to innovate in healthcare. We That's can we can even fund new projects. We can seed fund them. We can support them with technology or both. And we can even bring you real clients who are looking for solutions. So there is a whole um, ecosystem that we are building of people who want to improve healthcare. And our platform is just a foundation for that. Right. Your ideas, your audience, your business will help you launch it. Uh, so that's the second element. Now the third element is, if you're just a patient, consumer, download the Care Wallet, look at it and see if you find it difficult to use, then tell us and we'll simplify it. Because our vision is that either my grandma or my granddaughter should be able to use it. Yes. And the more people use it, the more feedback we get, the more simplification we're going to do. But ultimately our goal is to have a billion people using the wallet at some point or the other in their life because they need care. Absolutely. Look, you know, we can, you may or may not own Bitcoin, you may or may not drive a certain car, you may or may not, you know, fly, but healthcare is need. Right? We are born into healthcare, we're gonna die into healthcare's arms. So everybody's gonna need healthcare at some point in their life. Healthcare is a necessity. So our job is to make that necessity not feel like a burden. Our job is to give you choices. So in that regard, I would encourage everybody, if you are in a country where care wallet is available, and I think it's available in countries right now. Okay. Now our plan is to go to all 200 countries over the course of the next 12 months. So it will get more available. And if it's not available in your country, reach out to us and say, look, I want to use it in my country and we'll, we'll look up, rush it forward. So the point is as a patient, try out the wallet. As a physician, come talk to us about building clinical journeys. And as a developer, the world is wide open. We can help you build very powerful health solutions that you're dreaming about, but you don't know how to begin and how to get take it to market. That's absolutely fantastic. One follow-up question with that, that you are already in 20 countries, which is, you mentioned to me before that you all have office all over the world and aim to go to the next 200 countries in the next whole month. Are you already have offices or applications in China or that's part of the plan because China has such a big Absolutely. market and so important? So our vision is that the, uh, the most of the world we will work with partners yes. and distributors or ambassadors. So we don't plan to open offices in every country. In fact, our vision is to enable local entrepreneurs uh, local visionaries who understand the market, the patient's needs, the, uh, who understand the regulatory or legal requirements, or at least are able to work with them. So healthcare is very local. And our vision is that in every local economy, every local healthcare jurisdiction, we will work with local teams. And we'll empower them, we'll educate them, we'll support them financially or intellectually or both. But end of the day, we want to have a whole army of entrepreneurs uh, be very successful on our platform. Yes. So in that regard, China would be through a partnership. Yes. And we would love to uh, encourage folks in China who are looking to build solutions that are relevant to Chinese population and Chinese culture yes. to uh, to work with us. And how about Spain or Italy? We actually have a partnership in Spain with an uh, entrepreneurial um, uh, organization that is looking to build a better uh, uh, healthcare model for this, specifically focused on, on children and children related issues. But look, even in a country where we might have a distributor or a partner, there is room to have many more because people tend to be very focused. Some some places our partners are focused on cancer, and the other places they're focused on vaccinations, or in the third place they're focused on pharmaceuticals. So the, the healthcare is vast, right? It's eight trillion dollar a year market, and we are basically saying the way it's structured, it doesn't benefit the patient, and most people would agree with that. So we are. Exactly, or it's stagnant, or it's in fact even in some ways inhibiting care, it's preventing care, right? right? Even though every government will tell you that healthcare is number priority number one, uh, often the policies are such that the healthcare isn't accessible to everyone. Sure. So the, my point is that in every region there are slightly different problems, but the root cause is always the same. Who has access to data? Who has access to choices? How does a doctor get paid? And how do I manage my rights as a patient? Those are fundamental issues, right. and almost as fundamental as human rights. So from that perspective, our point here is that in every country, we expect to have multiple distributors, whether it's uh, clinical, or it's therapeutic, or whether it's pharmaceutical, or whether that is at-home care. So there is room for a whole army of uh, developers and innovators yes. to use a platform in very creative ways. So China is a great market, it's a big market, but we would not go into China without partnerships. Because for us, the local intelligence is the most important thing. Right. So that's uh, how we expect. And same we true in Spain, Germany, Italy, UK. Um, ultimately, we see our platform being used in every healthcare jurisdiction. There is no reason why you couldn't use a platform in Uganda. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. In fact, we are getting a lot of interest from Africa because that's where so much of the 
um, in terms of improving healthcare in your slice of the world. You don't need to worry about how healthcare works in the US to make healthcare work better in Mexico, right? Absolutely. You don't need to worry about it. Yes. Just focus on your market, come to us and say, look, I have this issue, I see this opportunity, can you help me? That's absolutely fantastic. With that said, I believe you and SoulCare are doing absolutely fantastic things. We can also, within a short period of time, to follow up with you and hear all Please the news and the changes you are making in the world. I look forward to it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you.